look, you've got all these things you want to do in life. You want to achieve goals. You want to get fit. You want to have that dream person in your life. You want to travel the world. There's all this awesome stuff you want to do. But then you either fall into one of two camps. The first camp is that you end up working so much that you have no life. The second camp is that you don't end up working enough because you have too much life. And how do you balance the two of them? Well, as someone who has really sucked with work-life balance, with an asterisk, I want to share three of the strategies that I use now on a daily basis that have really worked miracles. And I promise I don't think they're things you've heard before. Hey guys, Alex Hine, author of the book, Master the Day. Now, if you want to work on your work-life balance, for me, it always starts with journaling to actually reflect what's working, what's not working. So the first link in the description is for a free journaling worksheet and an email course that you'll get every three days, a series of free emails that tells my story and helps you get started with journaling to reinvent your life. So you can check that out, the link below. So the first thing for me that made a very big difference is being fully all in on what you do. All in or all out. You're either working or you're playing. There is no what I see everybody do, especially entrepreneurs, which is that they're kind of working and then five minutes later they go to their phone. Kind of working and then five minutes later they go to a news article. Kind of working and then five minutes later they get up to pee. This is like the lowest, absolute lowest level of productivity. When I work, I just work. I put my phone on airplane mode for 30 minutes at a time. I use the self-control app on my Mac. I have a clearly delineated list of what I'm working on right now and for how long if it's not a project. When you work, be all in. And when you play, be all in. That shocking difference, a whole book has been written about that called The Power of Full Engagement. But that shocking difference of... If you're going to be working or studying or at the gym, just do the one thing and then it's done. And then you can go do this next thing. But what I see so many people do is the exact opposite. At the gym, on Instagram for eight minutes in between sets. Like in the car, going through so many different things and listening and then calling and texting. But especially with work, low quality work, it takes five hours to do what you could do in 90 minutes. So the second thing is to actually have something fun planned in the evenings. You know, I've struggled with this more than anyone I know. Because for me, the last seven years, I've been all work goals. I wanted to improve my actual career so much because it sucked. So what happened was I would go to my J job until 5. I would go to the gym and I'd get home at 7. Then it would be time to build my business for three hours. And then easily days, a whole week goes by. No problem. Every week without seeing anyone. Even my girlfriend and I, we made the sacrifice to only see each other on the weekend for three and a half years until my business was something I could do full time, quit my job. Now you may have to pay that price and do those sacrifices. I would recommend it if that's what it takes to reach your goals. But the difference is when you end up working so many hours, what happens is sometimes you show up and it's Friday night and you're like, wow, I have nothing to do. I don't know anyone doing anything. I have nothing to do. I'm not looking forward to Saturday and Sunday because it's boring. I have nothing. I'm just going to work again. And that's the trap I put myself into for a year. Before I was miserable and realized if I don't plan the weekend like I plan my work life, nothing's going to be there. So if you end up being like, hey, I'm off work at four today. Now let's go out and do something fun. But you have nothing fun planned. It's easy to just go back and do work if you work for yourself or if you love your work. But if you've said, you know what, I've designated 9 to 4, I'm going to work or study. And then guess what? I'm going to go to the gym at 5. I'm going to go to salsa lessons at 7. At 9, I'm going to go grab a glass of wine with one of my friends or go see a movie. Because you've planned that excess filler of the day, there's no way this work stuff is going to creep into what should be the play part of your day. So if you plan your play as hard as you plan your work, you'll stay balanced. And the last thing is to plan goals in all aspects of your life. This should go without saying. If you want to improve your life, that's the reason why in all my videos, every course, all my books, 
we always talk about setting goals in multiple aspects of life because you don't want to be the successful person that's alone in the mansion on the hill who's obese, miserable, divorced, and has contributed nothing to humanity. You want to be, and you can be, super successful, happy, fulfilled, healthy, your dream body, married to your ideal person. All of that's possible. But only if you set goals in those other parts of your life, right? The reason why people get successful and then unhealthy and divorced is not because you can't be successful and be healthy, happy, and married, but it's because they spend all their time and their mental energy dedicated to how can I be more successful instead of how can I be successful? How can I have an amazing marriage or relationship? How can I be super happy? How can I be super generous? How can I be super fulfilled? So if you set goals in other parts of your life, you're a lot more likely to have work-life balance because there's a reason to do these other things. The way it usually shows up for me is that I like to set three goals for each year. And in recent years, one goal has been financial related to my business. One has been a fun goal and relationships goal. And the third has just been a bucket list goal. So the bucket list goal is I've actually compiled a unique list of experiences I want to have in my life. And then I take time to try to find a way each quarter of the year to do one of those. So if you're taking the time to plan other parts of your life, then after your nine to five, you actually will have people to have dinner with on Friday night. You will have people to go to a museum or movie or go skydiving with. You will have people on Sunday to go for like a little joy ride or just go explore the city you're living in. That's all possible when you plan the other parts of your life as hard as your work life. All right, guys. So I hope that helps. I hope those are things that you were not necessarily thinking of. Less tactical, but very specific in terms of the big picture of your life. Now, of course, if you want to get started reflecting on your own life, click the first link in the description, download the free journaling worksheet to plan your year. You'll also get an email every three days on how I use journaling to completely reinvent my life and change it for the better. So you can check those out and you can also check out my last two videos there and there. 